Sup everyone, Paul from Granite House Funhouse. How's it going? Uh, today, it is a collection update for May 2019. I've got uh, quite a few things. Things I probably shouldn't have gotten since, uh, you know, not making any money right now. You know, being a, a uh, student just out of uh, school, graduated. But regardless, I, I, still, I got really some good deals, so that's why I got all of that stuff and all those sweet, sweet movies. Um, instead of doing this in sections like uh, DVDs, Blu-rays, VHS soundtracks, I'm just gonna you know, do it by stores I visited. And um, I'm gonna start with the VHSs. Um, first one being Peacemaker, which uh, came out in 1990, starring uh, Robert Forster. And um, uh, here's the tagline, one's a cop, one's a killer, but on earth, no one can, can tell them apart. It definitely has a uh, The Hidden vibe uh, to which with, uh, I can't wait to, to see. It was directed by Kevin S. Tenney, who did uh, Witchboard and uh, Night of the Demons. Um, I believe this was an only on VHS release, so uh, you know I'm going to keep this as a possible review for later on. Up next, it is uh, In and Out. It is a, a one of those um, wacky comedies, I'm thinking. It is from New World Pictures, uh, starring Pat Engel. Pat Engel was, uh, I think it was the police commissioner in Batman. Uh, music by T-Bone Burnett, which I did not know, but that's pretty cool. I uh, can't wait to, to see what it's about. I do not know. And then finally for VHS's uh, Crime Zone, which is uh, a uh, Roger Corman release starring uh, Robert Carradine and uh, Sherilyn Fenn of Twin Peaks fame. Uh, it's one of those, um, you know, post-apocalyptic movies. I mean, David Carradine's in it, so it must be. <laughs> it, it has to be. Um, the tagline for this is stylish, innovative, a post holocaust Bonnie and Clyde. Is it, will it be? We shall see, but uh, Crime Zone right here. Every year there's a sale in uh, La Prairie, Quebec, which is like, like 45 minutes out of Montreal, where uh, this uh, gentleman uh, collects or buy a lot of like lots of DVDs and Blu-rays and stores them for an entire year. And then the first or the last weekend of May uh, does a sale and uh, I've been going for the last three years now, and I've always found something really interesting. It's not like the, you know, it's more on the common stuff side of thing, but you know, I, I have titles I want that is more common. And uh, when I go there, I usually get what I want, or since it's only a dollar, a DVD and or Blu-ray, then, uh, you know, I may find something really good. Um, so I got a few things, obviously. And uh, first up, I'll start with uh, the Blu-rays I got. Uh, first up being uh, The Cabin in the Woods, uh, that movie directed by Drew Goddard and written by Joss Whedon with that really uh, fucked up ending. I'm sure everyone's seen The Cabin in the Wood, but I did not own it. Now I do. So Cabin in the Wood up next. Be Kind Rewind from uh, Michel Gondry, starring um, Jack Black and uh, Mos Def. I've actually, it's one of the Gondry film I've never seen. I've heard mixed things about it, but you know, since it was a dollar, why the hell not? Then I got Crank, Crank, I, uh, I upgraded. I had the DVD for, oh my God, it's been what, 13 years? I think I'm on, two, yeah, 2006. So I've had the DVD for well over a decade, but I decided finally to upgrade it. Crank is probably, the series is probably Jason Statham's finest hour on film, uh, especially Crank 2. High Voltage is uh, batshit crazy. Uh, Neville Dean Taylor, the, the, the both directors, uh, they really, uh, they really did, they outdid themselves in number two. Could there be a number three? Who knows? Jason, I think now is probably way too big for this, but it would be really cool for them to go back to the series, although where could it go from here? I do not know, but Crank is definitely one of the better action movies of the OOs. Up next, I got Battle Los Angeles, 
which is uh, one of those alien invasion movies. Uh, I actually remember seeing this at uh, the Alamo Draft House when I was in Austin, Texas. When was this? 2011. So yeah, I remember this quite well. So yeah, ba Battle of Los Angeles. Up next, Piranha Double D, the sequel to uh, Piranha, of course, the remake. Uh, I know I've seen it. I don't remember much from it now, but uh, I, I know I really loved the first one. Like it was a real surprise how good it was, and uh, you know, you got uh, Christopher Lloyd, uh, you got uh, you know Gary Busey, you got uh, who else do you have? You know. You have plenty of people. It is good. I will watch it again. Yes. <laughs> Up next, I got uh, Observe and Report, a Seth Rogen film uh, directed by Jody Hill. Uh, I guess it's what I guess it's one of his uh, flops he has on his uh, filmography. Uh, I remember this came out the same year as Paul Blart, and they pretty much have the same subject. And Paul Blart for some god awful reason was a really popular movie but uh, I got this I saw this because I saw Seth Rogen's interview with GQ where he did the uh, most iconic movies uh, segment where he talks about all of his movies and uh, it intrigued me enough to get it and um, I want to check it out see if it's uh, any good and then finally for the Blu-rays I got Hellride which is a uh, a Dimension Extreme release, a Quentin Tarantino present, uh, uh, directed by Larry Bishop, Michael Madsen's in this, Eric Balfour, Vinnie Jones, David Carradine again, and uh, Dennis Hopper, uh, like a biker movie. Uh, I don't know much of it, but you know, cover looked cool, so why not? I got this. As for the DVDs, I got quite a few as well. Uh, got Baby Boy from John Singleton, may he rest in peace, died uh, in late April, I think he was 51 years old, uh, that, super sad, that man was really talented, uh, that was one of his in his filmography I haven't seen yet, uh, I've heard uh, quite a few good things about it with Tyrese Gibson and Snoop Dogg's in this, so uh, you know, and Ving Rhames, so I want to check it out. I also got the movie Bullet, Sorry, Mickey Rourke and Tupac Shakur. This was Tupac's last uh, film that he did before he uh, was killed. Uh, directed by Julian Temple and uh, looks okay. It's a gritty urban thriller, so uh, why not? I'm gonna give it a shot. Bullet. Up next, I got Love and Bullet, starring Treach from Naughty by Nature. Uh, I. Don't, I don't know, like looking at the cover right there, uh, it's not its not filling me with confidence how good it would be. But I love Treach, I love Naughty by Nature, uh, could be a fun watch, we shall see. I also got uh, Chances Are, this is like my cheesy romantic movie Love Inside here, uh, directed by Emil Ardolino with Robert Dottie Jr., Ryan O'Neill, uh, Sybil Shepard. It's one of those uh, body switching movies from the 80s. Uh, I remember watching this quite a lot as a kid on a, like Saturday afternoon movies uh, on our local channel here. But uh, I want to see if it's any as, as good as I remember it or if it's any good, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I also got The Quest from uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Van Damme. Uh, it is a movie that he directed and wrote, I believe. Did he wrote it? No, he did not wrote it. The he came up with the story, directed it. It's one of those medieval movies, I guess. Uh, one of those... Um, uh, okay, okay, in the 1920s, so not medieval. <laughs> he did another movie. I, have, uh, I think it's, believe it's called Full Love, which was shot in 2008, that he directed. And then he was shown last year at Cannes, and then it might come out this year. But uh, for a dollar, the quest, why not? I'll give it a whirl, possibly. And then one of those uh, 90s kind of Tarantino-esque inspired movies, uh, Clay Pigeon, with uh, Vince Vaughn and uh, Janine Garofalo, and um, you know our, 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 everyone's favorite, Joaquin Phoenix, with uh, the Joker movie came out in September, which looks really good, you know. We'll give it a shot, but uh, Clay Pigeons is one of those that I've heard about. 
remember seeing a trailer it's a dollar why not took a shot up next uh stargate kurt russell james spader i've never seen this movie I've, i know of it i've seen clips of it I've seen the trailer but i've never actually sat down and watch it it's from roland emmerich he of you know godzilla independence day independence day resurgence which is one of the worst movies i've ever seen my god that movie was was crap but i uh, always wanted to see this so why not stargate uh, up next, Getting Even With Dad, one of the last uh, Macaulay Culkin films uh, when he was a kid, like when he still was, you know, high on fame. Uh, I, I kind of got this because lately Mac has been going on uh, the Red Letter Media uh, YouTube channel and he's been doing uh, episodes of Best of the Worst and he's done like reviews. The last thing he did, the review was The Warriors with uh, one of the members of the Red, Le Red Letter Media team and he's actually pretty good at it. Like, he's, he knows his shit. Mac knows his shit. So, I don't know. I got this. Why not? You know, we'll, we'll try it out. I, probably a huge pile of crap, but who knows? <laughs> Up next, I got The Order with uh, Eat Ledger. Uh, a horror movie from him. I don't think he's done that. I don't think he can do that many. Probably It's probably the only one. And it was uh, directed by Brian Eglin. Uh, with uh, Shannon Sosaman, where, where, what happened to her? We don't know. Uh, Peter Weller's in this? Oh, cool. All right. So, yeah, The Order, Eat Ledger. And then, finally, for the DVDs from the La Prairie Mega Vente DVD sale, uh, I got all three Rambo movies on DVDs uh, with the slipcover you know, right here Rambo 3, Rambo Part 2, First Blood. I've seen First Blood. I have not seen Rambo 2 and 3. And I feel quite shame about it because uh, I've actually seen Rambo 4, which is called Rambo. Uh, but 2 and 3, the, the, the action movie fan that I am, I've never seen Rambo 2 or 3. So I'm going to change that and I'm going to watch these. And then uh, I know the new Rambo, uh, Last Blood, Last Blood, Last Blood, <laughs> coming out September 20th. Uh, I will be there, see an old man living in a farm, mowing down people. That's that's my kind of jam. That's what I want to see. So um, that's it for the uh, La Prairie loot. In my last update, I talked about uh, doing my first uh, second spin order. And uh, I really love that website because uh, even though it is used DVDs and Blu-rays, uh, they really have good deals, especially for us Canadians. There's a 20% discount coupon that once a month that kind of appears and then you only pay $5 shipping for everything you buy. So for things I want to like order in the United, in the States, uh, Second Spin is the place, you know, to get some good stuff. And I did. I bought a little, little stack of, uh, of, of movies. Uh, first one being Drive uh, from Nicholas uh, Winden Refn, Ryan Gosling, the... Probably the movie that put him on the map. My favorite movie of 2012. Uh, just so good all around. You know, you got um, Brian Cranston, Krishna Hendricks, Ron Perlman is in this. Uh, Albert Brooks, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, with uh, Nicholas Winden Refn, it's either you love him or hate him. There's no middle ground with him. I am in the love camp. I love Only God Forgives. I love The Neon Demon. And uh, there's a new show of his coming out uh, next week, June 14, next Friday. It's um, Too Old to Die Young. He uh, created it with Ed Brubaker, and it stars uh, Miles Teller, who plays a cop who goes like undercover, where there's like uh, show good, like assassins, and it looks really crazy good. Like the, if like the palette. Like the style of uh, Refn, everything you like, watch the trailer, everything's in there. Cliff Martinez is back for the soundtrack, which adds a lot to what he does. Without him, I don't know how good it would be, but it just adds up. Like the music is just phenomenal. Uh, yeah, man, Drive, got, I wanted to upgrade it because I'm probably going to watch it soon. So uh, yeah, Drive. Up next, I got uh, Boys in the Hood. Another upgrade. I've seen this movie a few times. Uh, thought to myself, why not seeing it in, in Blu-ray glory? And I had a good deal for it. So uh, got Boys in the Hood. Um, 
Up next, I got Dead Wish 4, The Crackdown, starred Charles Bronson, uh, directed by G. J. Lee Thompson, who's done plenty of canon films with uh, Mr. Bronson. Uh, it's not as crazy as number three. Number three is a masterpiece in craziness and just pe like literally just gunning people down for zero reason. He's, this one is more about the cocaine. He goes after uh, drug dealers because the daughter of the woman he was seeing got uh, overdosed on cocaine and that drives him nuts and goes to kill on everybody uh, associated with the how she got the cocaine. Uh, it's pretty good. Actually, I saw it this week. It's pretty good. I liked it. Like I said, not as crazy as three, but it's worth seeing. Uh, what's left for me to see is uh, Death Wish 5, uh, The Face of Death, which came out in 94, which was shot here in Canada. Uh, I, I doubt it's any good because he, he was getting up there by that point. I don't like, you know, you can you could be a vigilante for so long until, you know, and he's, he looks like I saw the trailer. And he looks bored. So it doesn't go, doesn't bode well for me watching it. And um, the last Blu-ray Blu Blu -ray I got was uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the 40th anniversary collection edition from uh, Dark Sky Film. I believe it is a, a three disc set. There's um, you know, commentaries. Uh, there's uh, many like small documentaries trailers, uh, interviews with uh, the stars of the movie. Obviously, it's a classic from Toby Hooper. And I will admit something right now that I've, I've never admitted to anyone. Well, a few people, but uh, I've never seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's right. Um, in all, Especially on this channel, Grand House Funhouse, not seeing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's, it's almost sacrilegious. I just didn't get around to it, but now I have this beautiful, beautiful release. Just, you know, it will usher me in in the world of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I cannot wait uh, to, to watch it. Uh, I know of it, I've seen clips, obviously, but uh, I'm, I can't wait to watch it. I'm gonna, you know, take my time, ingest <laughs> the movie, live with it. And, uh, but yeah, the, the, that, that was my confession. But now I have it and I will see it and uh, surely I will enjoy it. Uh, I got three DVDs <laughs> also in this order. One of them is a Kiss of Death starring uh, David Caruso at his uh, NYPD Blue fame at, at his highest. I think he quit the show to do this movie. Uh, look how that turned out for him for a few years anyway. Then he did the CSI uh, Miami. But uh, there's a Helen Hunt in this, Samuel L. Jackson, Michael Rappaport, Ving Rhame, Stanley Tucci. It's a very 90s cast, directed by Barbe Schroeder. Uh, I actually remember wanting to see this when it came out in 1995. Didn't get around to it, but now I got, I got this to, to, you know, to see it. Um, up next, Crack House, which is kind of like an early 90s urban film starring, um, you know, Jim Brown, uh, Anthony Geary, uh, Richard Roundtree, you know, so uh, kind of like a modern black exploitation film. Uh, can't wait to, to to check it out. And then the last DVD in this order from uh, Second Spin, and I've been wanting to see this forever. I've got the poster right here. I've shown it on on a video before, but it is uh, the Black Samurai, Jim Kelly, kicking ass and taking names. Uh, there's no Blu-ray release for this. Uh, this this seems like a really cheaply made release. I don't know. Like uh, I'm looking at the, the the cover, I don't know. It's not inspiring me, but I I've wanted to see it for the longest time, and uh, I cannot wait to to check it out. So uh, yeah, man, Black Samurai, Agent for Dragon, Jim Kelly. Up next, I got um, a few things. I got uh, these right here. There was a video store that uh, closed down near me. We have this uh, this chain, kind of like a, a blockbuster type chain here in Canada, or at least in Quebec, Super Vidéotron. And they're all closing one by one and they're just liquidating all their stock. I heard about the sale. I went to it and I found three titles. Uh, one of them is uh, Green Room which uh, stars Patrick Stewart and uh, who else? Oh yeah, Ant uh, Anton Yelkin, who uh, die freakishly being uh, 
ran over by his own car, which was kind of fucked up. But uh, I've heard quite a few good things about this one. It's from Jérémy Saulnier. Uh, I know it's uh, it's about uh, a band like uh, going to a white power supremacist kind of bar and then they play for them but then something goes wrong and then they try to escape from said club and uh, Patrick Stewart is like the head of the uh, white supremacists um, so yeah man I looks really good I can't wait to check it out then I got the blu-ray of uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane which I didn't have, obviously I've seen. Look at this, this crappy like video store. Uh, I, I need to find like a Blu-ray case for this because uh, it looks kind of like crap, but I thought it was a worthy successor to um, uh, Cloverfield. You know, they, that was the surprise. We didn't know what it was. And then they said, oh, it's kind of like a, a it, it happens at the same time as the events in Cloverfield. So uh, there you go. And then I got the disaster artist directed by James Franco and he plays uh, you know from the movie The Room and played Tommy Wiseau kind of recreating the filming of The Room and everything that was around this and it's from based on the movie uh, based on the book from um, what's his face Greg Sestero and uh, it is quite good quite good indeed he, he, he uh, imbued <laughs> Tommy Wiseau quite well. I think, I believe it was, uh, wasn't he nominated for an Oscar for this one? I don't know if it was acting or uh, writing the, the movie, but uh, yeah, really worth checking out. And then the last thing I got movie-wise, uh, I or some guy here from Montreal on his Amazon uh, website or, you know, where people sell their movies, there you go. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, he had really good prices for two movies I was on the lookout for. There are two black exploitation titles. Uh, one, the first one is for Mill Creek, the just released The Take and Black Gun double feature. Uh, it's really, really good. I saw Black Gun starring Jim Brown, uh, one of his better movies. He's kind of like a, um, he, he runs like a, a nightclub the gun nightclub and then mafias involve and uh you know he gets to be badass through the the entire movie uh it's really good must check it out i haven't seen the take yet with uh, billy d williams but uh, it is on the list to see uh one black exploitation titles i've wanted for the longest time and it is bucktown starring fred williamson pam greer talmus razulala Tony King and uh, Bernie Hamilton. It's an American international release. Uh, just, I mean, Fred Williamson and Pam Greer in a movie alone, you know, is worth getting. And, excuse me, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I really want to. And it will happen soon. And then, finally, for the Blu rays that I've bought, uh, I got, uh, I'm not big on like Japanese cinema that much. And uh, especially the, during like Fantasia stuff, like they, they almost half of the programming is a lot of like this Asian cinema. And some of it is good, but most of it I find a bit too uh, out there, I guess. But one I was uh, interesting to see, it is from the Shaw Brothers and it is Inframan, which looks kind of bonkers. Just that, just the artwork alone for this uh, just makes me want to see it right away. And the trailer too, like I've seen the trailer and uh, it's it's really good i believe there's two other sequels sequels to this and uh just look at the like the characters in this movie like i don't know if you could see them here um i definitely can't not wait to uh, to see it and possibly do a review because it looks weird enough that i want to talk about it with people that means you out there so uh, I, I will check it out and then uh what's left is uh the vinyls more soundtracks added to my ever-growing collection. Uh, there was a few uh, sales in May that I went to, uh, just random stops at record stores I go to that uh, have uh, really great selections. Uh, let's go through them, shall we? Uh, first up, 2001, A Space Odyssey, Stanley Kubrick's masterpiece. Uh, it actually turned 50 this year. This was a Cinerama uh, release as well. I would have loved to see that in that in that kind of in that theater. 
but uh, yeah it's it's all like classical pieces and uh, this uh, vinyl from it is an original copy that dated from like 1969 50 this thing is it's 50 years and it's in mint condition it has survived 50 years in the wild just uh, looking amazing and uh, and it sounds great too I gotta get a chance to listen to it and uh, it sounds great uh, up next Blake Edwards a fine mess which is a various artiste uh, collection of songs uh, we got Chico the Barge <laughs> we got Nick Jameson second generation Los Lobos uh, I you know worth, worth listening to will I see the movie probably not but uh, I like this enough to pay a dollar and to get uh, up next I got a midsummer night summer comedy or a, mid a midsummer night sex comedy from Woody Harrelson uh, one of his earlier work, 1982. Um, I got this because, not so much for Woody, but it's all like classical uh, pieces from Mendelssohn. And I thought to myself, like, why not sometimes just put some, you know, classical music from a soundtrack on? Uh, I got it. Why not? Give it a chance. Up next, The Big Chill. More music from The Big Chill. Let's get more songs from the original soundtracks. I got the first one. I think I, I showed it in the last uh, in the last uh, collection update. But on this one, you got Clearwater Revival, Beach Boys, Four Top, Percy Sledge, uh, Marvin Gaye, The Rascals, Steve Miller Band, all these fine, fine, fine groups, all on one soundtrack. Up next, the Buddy Holly story when uh, Gary Busey was still sane enough and uh, good enough to act <laughs> in movies. Uh, Gary Busey in this did all the songs. Uh, I mean, he performed them all. And that's the, the versions you hear on the, on the, the record. Uh, I cannot wait to, uh, actually, I want to see the movie. I'm going to see the movie first and then probably listen to the soundtrack. But uh, yeah, Buddy Holly story. Up next. The Golden Child with Eddie Murphy, another various artiste uh, soundtrack uh, with Ashford and Simpson, Martha Davis, Rat, uh, and then a few uh, instrumental uh, cuts from it. A Michael Ritchie comedy that's uh, it, it's a known Murphy movie, but it's not talked as much as like say Coming to America. But I've seen this movie quite a few times, and look at this artwork; it's just amazing. Looks really good, Eddie, on this one. Looks good. Uh, up next, I got a Gun, which is uh, a Blake Edwards film. It is based on the the Peter Gunn TV series. They did one movie, which came out, I believe, was it 1967? Uh, the same actor that played Peter Gunn came back for this, and it's uh, Aaron Mancini. So, uh, you know, he is uh, one of the masters at this. Uh, and I thought the cover looked really, really cool, so I got this. Then I, this is uh, up next is another Varese Saraband titles I've, I've added to my collection. I believe I'm up to three or four now. And regardless of what it is, I will buy it because I just love that label. And uh, the movie is Last Embrace, starring um, Roy Shatter, Janet Margolin. It is a Jonathan Demme film. I, I don't know if it was his first or second. Uh, actually, no, wait, it's 1983. So he was probably three or four films deep in his filmography. It's uh, one of, uh, like a, a thriller. And uh, I've actually listened to it. Uh, the composer is uh, Miklos Rosa. And it's quite good, like for a blind buy and uh, listening to this, uh, I really, really enjoy this. And again, look at the artwork. It's uh, it's beautiful. It's nice, isn't it? Yes. And uh, up next, I got Nashville, Robert Altman. Uh, it's uh, David Arkin, Ned Beatty's in this, Karen Black, Key Carradine, uh, Shelley Duval's in this, Harry Gibson, so many people. Uh, I've seen quite a few Robert Altman films. I have not seen Nashville, but decided to get the soundtrack. Four dollar, why not? Up next, it is Superman 2, Superman 2, starring Christopher Reeve, Gene Ackman, and, uh, you know, uh, directed by Richard Donner. But no, his version came out finally, like there was a version of his that they released. Um, 
but uh, this this one was directed by Richard Lester. Uh, this version, what I love about this, and I've, it's the first time I've seen this. I don't know if you're gonna see it on camera, but I don't know if you see this, but there's like Superman logos that were etched on the vinyl. It's kind of like, um, I don't know if you could see it right here. It was etched on with lasers. And when I saw this, I was like, man, this is really cool. I've never seen this. But uh, the original music was of course from John Williams, but the rest of the music was from Ken Torn. Never heard of the man, but uh, you know, it's nice to have Superman 2 in a soundtrack collection. And then finally, for the soundtracks, and I've seen this one so, 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 so many times in dollar bins I would go through and never picked it up. And you know, at, the, at this point I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna get this. <laughs> the Woman in Red, which is uh, Gene Wilder, who wrote and directed it with the, the very sexy Kelly Labrock and uh, Gene Wilder's uh, wife, Gilda Radner. Uh, it's, this music was produced by Stevie Wonder. So uh, he's all over this. And uh, look at this, look at, look at the man smiling right here, Stevie right here. And uh, yeah, why not? Uh, it was time, I feel like it was time to get, and I did get The Woman in Red. So uh, that is it for the vinyls. I'm surprised on how much I managed to purchase for, uh, yeah, it's, it's, quite, it's quite the stack of uh, goodies I, I, I got. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this uh, collection update. Uh, you know, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, check out my Instagram feed at Grindhouse Funhouse where I post on the daily. Uh, in the comment section, uh, leave a comment to, to see, to let me know which, um, which title in my, my, my huge uh, update you liked. Uh, how shameful should I feel for not have seen uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre yet? You could, you know, run me over the coal over it. It's fine with me. I, I'll take it. It's it's quite all right. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. There's more uh, come a few more videos coming up next week. I got uh, two three videos I have in mind that I want, I'm gonna work on. Uh, a, a hint I will give you. It is in relation to the release of Shaft, the new. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson version of Shaft that is coming out next Friday. I want to kind of do something with that. And, uh, and on that note, uh, thank you again, like I said, for watching. And uh, you'll see me again soon.